Welcome to episode 52 of the official podcast for Guardian One, a destiny group dedicated to the prosperity of guardians everywhere. We broadcast live Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I am joined by Crimson Warlock. What's up, everybody? Jez. Good morning. Agrios. Greetings, Guardians. And very special guest, Sharks. Yo, Guardians. We are going to be talking about all things Destiny. Uh, but first, housekeeping from our very own Hollow River 2.0. Hello, Guardians. Thank you all for listening to the podcast, however it is that you're choosing to listen. Be sure to follow Guardian 1 on Twitter at G1Net. That's G, the number one, N-E-T. You can also take a look at the Guardian 1 website at Guardian1.net. If you do a search on Bungie.net for Guardian 1, you'll find our forums group, of which we'll also use for both comments and feedback. Once again, you can watch the show live at twitch.tv slash Guardian 1 Network every Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. If you can't catch the show live, you can search Guardian 1 for the iTunes podcast, as well as go onto the Guardian 1 YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Guardian 1 Network. Guardian 1 is a proud member of the Guardian Radio Network, so be sure to check out their website at theguardiansofdestiny.com. There you'll find all of the different podcasts that's part of the network, including Aim Assist Gaming, TTL Party Chat, Robust Radio, Ghost and Echoes, as well as the flagship podcast Guardian Radio. Guardian Radio broadcasts every Monday night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, on twitch.tv slash Guardian Radio. You can also follow their Twitter account, at Guardians of D, and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Guardians of D. That's all I have for now. Moving on. All right. Thank you very much, Hollow River 2.0. Uh, Was there it, some signal quality issues there for a second? You know, it's. I'm hearing it right now. Are you guys hearing it right now? Yeah, the feedback. Yeah. yeah, I don't know yeah, what that is. What's funny going on? Let's see. Uh, everyone mute up. All right. Uh, Agrios, come back and say what's up. What is up? Uh, Jez, come back. Say what's up. What's up? It's uh, you. Oh, it's, it's Jez. Something is... Uh, Something is broadcasting on your level, Jez. Canadian airwaves. Right, they have to share it with the geese. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was really awesome. That was really cool. Um, River decided to do that because he got tired of hearing... <laughs> he got tired of hearing the uh, the hollow river that we had put in there for him. And I think that was, uh, I think that was excellent. Uh, it, it makes me... It makes me super excited for the future because I don't know, like that was really awesome. Did you guys think that was awesome? Yeah, it's it's like losing Dinklebot and getting Nolan North. <laughs> <laughs> is, is the background his gone? No, it's still there. Not Weird. There. Yeah, that's not normally there. No, it's, it's not. It's it sounds like you're blow drying your hair. Maybe it's like a fan or something. Well, the funny thing is, he always, before we turn his fans on, be like, can you hear those? Or Like, I had these off, and couldn't you hear those? And we, totally. we could never hear him when he turned them back on, even. So that's weird. Okay, apparently I didn't mute. Is it gone? Yeah. Okay, it's... My laptop apparently was at a bad angle. It just kind of went towards my mic. That's what it sounded like. That's exactly what it sounded like. Because the feedback loop. Alrighty, uh, tons of stuff to talk about today. Um, as always, um, sharks, uh, great to have you back on the show. Uh, what have you been doing since last you were here? Um, playing the crap out of Destiny, just as always, <laughs> and of course losing my uh, my grimoire score to Agrios. But other than that, just playing Destiny. Really, you lost out to Agrios. Yes, somebody Ooh. went to the lighthouse, and I haven't been to the lighthouse yet, so he's got 30 points on me right now. Uh, but, yeah, but I'm exactly 30 points, so even if he went to the lighthouse, we would be tied at the moment. 
Uh, and so, what yeah. is uh, what is next for each of you, Agrios? What is your what is your next grimoire hit? And Sharks, what is your next grimoire hit besides the lighthouse? Well, I'm not sure what my my next hit precisely will be. The the next couple things I need to clear are my skirmish kills, my cl- I mean my skirmish wins, my clash wins, my salvage wins, and my hunter crucible kills. Sharks, twenty skirmish wins. I'll get five more points, and I'm finished with skirmish. And then I gotta move on to rumble, which I don't really look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could I could definitely see that. Um, I certainly have all of Rumble to do, too. I just didn't list that because I don't expect that to happen anytime soon, and you ask what was next on my list. <laughs> What's your actual Grimoire number? I'm at uh, 3620. 3590 for me. Man, that's crazy. I'm that's... missing so many PvP ones that I'm certain I'm at... 3,500, exactly. Well, maybe maybe you should jump on and come play with us more often. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's I, the Sharks that we're working on now. If you need some PvP, come jump in with us. You know, By the I, way, someone's popcorn's done. I feel like I feel like Jez has better things to do. Does anyone else feel this way? <laughs> <laughs> I'm nope. not currently considering. I've been playing multiple console games. I started playing Star Wars The Old Republic, and... Kind of getting back into World of Warcraft just for fishing. Interesting. Just for fishing, and what is that exactly? I don't, I don't know. Well, they have a like a mini game that you just like cast a line and then click on it as soon as it starts moving, saying you got a fish. And I do that several hundred times until I get a rare fish. I turn it in for a rep, and I got to do that probably about a thousand times. And this makes you happy? Uh, in a way, yeah, because it's it's an it's a long grind, because at the end of it, there is a black and red water strider for a mount that like walks on water, and it looks cool. And and how long do you uh, suspect this is going to take you to earn? Uh, probably two weeks. Man, for how long each day? But it doesn't take very much like thought to do it, so I'll just leave it up and running, and while I'm watching something, I'll cast a line, click it, cast a line, click it. So it's interesting. It's just kind of, it's kind of low level, low level activity for me. Uh, uh, I I can't see how you can compare that to running raids with Dado blind. Well, I, I can. I mean, think about it. He just said that it takes zero output on his <laughs> part. <laughs> you know, like, uh, actually, you know what? I got to run a raid with Datto um, just this last week and also math class. I, I was the only person who wasn't uh, part of math class, and those guys kick ass. Those guys are awesome. Uh, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't in on what was going on. You know, I'm not part of math class, but it was really cool. It was really fun, and... <laughs> Uh, and I didn't they mean really business. Want to say, hey, you should jump in the Teamspeak because that would be ultra confusing. You trying to set up Teamspeak? Uh, you know what? Actually, I already have Teamspeak. Oh, you do. Destiny Dispatch. Yeah. Oh, I... then it probably would have been much easier to just start <laughs> doing it. But I, I was like pointing at him, saying, "Hey, go run Sword." But you never ran Sword, so I just went. Oh, you know what? I would have been happy to run Sword. Uh, oh if... uh, no, I meant I meant like across the bridge. Like I was pointing at you. Hey, go. Oh. Run sword. I and thought instead. you were saying, stay here. <laughs> you stay here. And I thought, well, okay. <laughs> Maybe that's one of the things that we can fix with a change in emotes. Being uh, able to tell without verbal communication certain right? things. Right? That would be great. Like maybe like a batter up pose, you know, a point, batter up. <laughs> um, or also, like someone tells you to kill him. And that will kind of give you an idea, hey, I'm supposed to go. Right? That works. That sounds like it works. I also got to run a strike. I ran a Nightfall with Destiny Overwatch and also more console. Uh, and they were they were busy dying a lot because it was uh, it had brawler, and so they were trying to uh, trying to use brawler. I, I don't see the use of brawler in anything other than a an oh crap situation. You know, so- like so you mean that you were playing with them just like you would with Agrios? Yeah, yeah, totally. 
<laughs> totally. <laughs> now, the way it rolls. <laughs> was this with three titans? Uh, I was a hunter, so I was invisible medic the whole time. Uh, but, but they, they were tightening? Yeah, they were both titans. And were they trying to kill the devil walker? I'm assuming this is a strike with a devil walker in it. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was the... Tanix? No. Devil's it was Lair, the though. devil's lair, yeah. Yeah, because there's a weird thing with the uh, the arc cannon on the top that it transfers like eight times the damage that it takes to its central core. So right. when it's arc and it's brawler and they're using peregrine greaves, you can one shot it. Yeah, he was definitely he definitely had those cruising around with them. Uh, but it was cool. I mean, I got um, no land beyond again. <laughs> which sucks and i got another no land beyond this week on one of the nightfalls i ran this week kind of sucked uh you know what though jez you you bring up something very interesting that i've wanted to talk about something i've really been feeling that i want in destiny uh, and i kind of want to just go down the line and see what y'all think about it and so you can throw out your ideas as well is this idea of a mini game like for for a while i was spending a lot of time in the tower just hanging out, and I thought, you know, it would be really great is if there was some bungee-fied, simple game that you could just walk up like a kiosk, like a, an arcade, uh, and play, you know, something like Frogger or Asteroids or something very, very, something very, very basic, but something that you, you know, the learning curve is easy to learn, but lifetime to master kind of a thing, you know, like it... But I was thinking it would be really awesome uh, if there was just another way to waste time and just another way to play and exist in the game of Destiny. And I, I really keep going back to this idea as something that's that sounds really awesome. Sharks, I will start with you. Uh, what do you think about the idea of some mini game like this? Maybe a little bit more involved than what Jez is talking about with fishing. Uh, but something that's that's very simple that harkens back to the earlier days of video games. Something that you could put time into if you didn't feel like going out and shooting something. You just wanted to put a quarter in, so to speak, and play this game. Maybe it runs on special coins. Uh, that would be that would be really cool. What do you think, Sharks? Okay, I, if if you're gonna do something like this, I could I could uh, I I know exactly what I'd want. Not a video game, uh, a chessboard, and then other gu guardians can jump in and start playing chess with you. And that's a way to meet new people, too. Oh, man. But what you're talking about is, like, it, it could very much be a huge time sink. I'm not saying that it's a horrible idea uh, mm -hmm. to have that in addition <laughs> if you were going to do that. But I, I can't imagine people going to play that uh, chess. That just seems, like, way too involved. Uh, but if that well, shows I mean, up it, does, first... it doesn't have to be chess, though. I mean, it could be anything. You can... You talking about quick games, backgammon, checkers, whatever. But, you know, it's, about it. it's it's something like that you're actually going to be competing with somebody else right then and there. And, of course, they're already going to be in your time loop because they're going to be in the tower. And, like I say, it's just a way to meet new people. I don't know. Uh, I want Hollow River and the Taken King as well. Mr. Stay Puff. Uh, what do you think about this, Agrios? Mini game in the tower, and uh, what do you think? I think it's a no-brainer, a great idea. I mean, the Destiny community already likes to make games when there are none there. Uh, I mean, and, and I mean, and they did add games for us to make ourselves, so to speak. I mean, they put that little fan in the tower. They put a soccer ball in that evil purple orb. <laughs> and uh, you got that, that uh, Gorgon's eye that you can kick around in the reef. And uh, now the Tess is gone. You can even use Tess's little box there in the tower as a goalpost to try to kick the soccer ball into it. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, these are all great, but, but they're also very, very I don't know, small, very, very um, non-intrusive, non-bulky as far as like the, uh, how much they take up of the room on the game, so to speak. And, and although I'd love to see a lot more sort of interactive game type things, I don't think we're going to see anything like that till Destiny Two because of last gen. Really, you don't think that they could put like a a pong they emulator or they can't. They don't have room for more vault space in the tower. Like if they they have room for a pong emulator, I want room for a couple more guns instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think about this, Crimson Warlock? Is this or wait, no, 
Jez, what do you think about this? Jez, would you would you play like an Asteroids type video game, or would you want to go more towards like board game, like what Sharks mentioned, or or do you think that it would be more like in person? You're doing this like what Agrios was talking about. Well, I'm gonna post a picture of my character in World of Warcraft and show you how non silly fishing is. Firstly. It's not this <laughs> thing you just do. I gotta get a hat. I gotta get a fishing rod, and I go out there, and I'll show you what I get whenever the cat the chat catches up. But I want I see uh, Mr. Main in the in the chat say he wants to be play an eight bit Destiny game, and I thought, oh, that would be great a side scrolling Destiny game, like just super like lo fi, be kind of fun. Oh just, yeah. Yeah, are you like, so, so like Contra? I was just going to say like three guards. Yeah, like Contra. That would be cool. Uh, okay, so like a drop-in three-player machine that you could go up to and that would be that would be amazing. You pick up orbs and build up a super and do a little 8-bit super. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that would be so great. Although I don't know how Defender would do so well. <laughs> In Contra games, you're always moving forward. So well, it'd have to be. So a, you wouldn't get to choose. You just if you pick Titan, you'd be Striker. If you pick, uh, you know, you'd be t- yeah. Striker, one, Blade Dancer. Oh, or, you know, and you know what? Those. There was a uh, there was a community video that I saw not too long ago, and it had like a six person state. It had a six person select screen, done in like sixteen bit, but like you would see on like the Ninja Turtle arcade yeah, games. That's exactly what it looked like. Uh, and, and, and he like scrolled over each of them and it was like an outline of them. And then it highlighted them with like, that would be really cool. I would love, 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 like I can, I can imagine, I saw some concept art, uh, a while back that some community member did that was like, it was like Sepix prime. And it was these tiny little, you know, it was like a side scrolling Contra looking thing, but it had these, these guardians. I would put time into that. I would, I would love to. You know, let's let's make that happen. That would be fun. Ah. Uh, but so let's let's uh, get to Crimson Warlock. What do you think about that Crimson Warlock? Is this is this something that you could do, or you don't have enough time for uh, Destiny, or you know, what's up with that? <clears throat> well, when I first thought of uh, you know your your mini game requirements of something that was you know quick to pick up, not not a lot of skill involved but hard to master kind of a thing i was like dude the the guardian suicide rate's too high for flappy birds in the tower <laughs> yeah. i was actually thinking about flappy bird when i was when i in my mind i was thinking what what possibly could could this be like what game could this be what is something simple that is you know you could just go out and do and it would be almost a no-brainer uh but i skipped past flappy bird because you're right it's <laughs> we already have guardians jumping off the tower to escape their their daily times we don't we don't need another reason <laughs> for them to yeah, dance out. i i do like the idea of a mini game um though i i can't really think of anything though i i would like something that you know would just give you you know give you just a decorative buff or something because you played it or just something cosmetic that's fun and quirky just because you played the mini game for like five ten minutes or something you know yeah. almost like a nightfall buff but like have it be have it be something quirky but uh just i think i think something that that make it more social as well would be kind of unnecessary if it was in there whether you're playing with other people or it's something you could show off yeah that's exactly what I'm thinking as well. I mean, that sounds, it sounds like fun. It sounds like, uh, you know, I, I want to spend time there. I want to do something that's, <laughs> that's like that. Uh, because I, because I really, really love, I really, really love existing in destiny. I love going and hanging out and, and not worrying about, you know, like I just love hanging out. I just love hanging out in the tower. I want something more to do that you know could just even be described as bullshit <laughs> it's, i just want i just want more i just want another reason uh okay so this is the this is that um that thing that you're talking about your your fishing pole so this is what you're trying to get jez no that's what i have now in order to get 
the the mount. Like I have to wear a stupid hat that gives me plus one hundred fishing, and the fishing rod is gives me plus one hundred fishing, and need like <laughs> nine hundred fishing to get these out of the uh, water. So yeah, it's it's completely silly that you're playing this undead creature and you're fishing. So what you're so saying f- is, it's, it's going to be so worth it. See, I'll some, show you in some like people in the road. Some people describe hard dedication as hard work and sweat, and Jed does it by dressing up silly and fishing. So what you're saying is that this hat you don't condone? <laughs> no. It, it looks kind of like a squid, like a, a puppet squid sitting on your head. kind of looks like Crota, now that I'm thinking. It actually it. does like move around as you are just sitting there, so I don't think it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh all right, awesome. Thank you, uh, thank you, Jez, for sharing that with us. <laughs> okay, um, so moving on, uh, there was something I wanted to get to from last week that we did not cover, and it was in that uh, it was in the Game Informer interview with Luke Smith, like that one hundred and whatever questions. Uh, uh-huh. I want to say, for the record, that that is probably my favorite interview slash information um, connection that I've seen in so long, just so many answers to even uh, mundane things, but something that we didn't talk about uh, that I don't know how we didn't talk about. And I'm going to paraphrase here because I didn't get a chance to watch it again right before the show. Uh, but, But one of the questions was, will you give us something cool to do in loading screens? Now, again, this is paraphrasing. I, I did not write this down specifically from the words, but but this is correct, right, Agrios? You heard him say these things? Um, I, yeah, it sounds familiar. Okay. I've looked it, at does, a lot of information. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? All righty, then. <laughs> I don't remember. No. Okay, so 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 the, the interviewer says, will you give us something cool to do in loading screens? And Luke Smith says, do you like ham sandwiches? And then the guy says, do I like ham sandwiches? And Luke Smith says, yes. And then the interviewer says, I like ham sandwiches. Uh, is that the, you know, and then Luke Smith says, there you go. And then he says, okay, well, is that the answer to my question that I just asked? And Luke Smith said, yes. Uh, and so I think that this is a big deal. Like I, well, to be I, fair, the question he just asked was, "Do I like ham sandwiches?" Okay, yes, I wanted to address that as well. A very good point, uh, and, and and definitely something that was on my mind as I brought this up. But I am very reserved. Like I have no, I have a boundless amount of of patience and love for what Bungie is doing. So whenever something shows up, fine. I will accept it and I will give my thoughts on it when the time comes. But this really, really stood out as why are you playing around, Luke Smith? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, uh, I, I think I, I think they told him, okay, if you have if your answer to our question, we're gonna ask you all kinds of questions, and we know you can't answer half of them. If your answer, if you can't talk about it, if your answer is going to meet no, no comment, just be funny and make something up. That's the way this interview came off to me. Because every question he didn't want to answer, he did something like that for. Okay, yeah, but, but you know, I think it's also uh, he had a really bad time with that with that one interview, and he's coming off him coming across differently this time. And you know, it's it's trying to show everybody that he's just a real guy and he's just out there trying to have fun. Uh, you know, I really think the Eurogamer uh, article, like if we were a fly on the wall, would have been just like this one. And it just didn't translate well in the text at all. Yeah, that, that should have been a video. Like it's just like this one that he was trying to be funny with the whole throw money at the screen thing. It was just horribly coincidental that that came out the same time that I leaked all that Red Bull stuff, and it had the same throw money at the screen language in the in the advertisement stuff. <laughs> Uh, Echo Doctrine says, love the Contra idea. Maybe a tower card game like Gwent from The Richer 3 would be fun with Destiny characters, Lord Shax, Cade 6, etc. Uh, I like that a lot. I could definitely get in with a, like a card game. You know, something that's... I don't know. I want the turnaround to be quick enough to where I don't, I don't want to go run a strike. I don't want to do a bounty, but I'm not ready to log off. 
I'm not ready to exit this world. I just don't want to go start something like that. Uh, I think that this would bring a lot of people in. You know what, though? They're, they probably don't have something like this because they probably don't want people hanging out. Well, you know what, though? I guess since it's it's person to person, right? If I start a tower, somebody will come into my tower. I'm hosting that tower, right? So it's not even on them. It's on me. Is this correct? For the most part. I mean, you're still using their resources, but they're networking through someone in that tower, right? Interesting. Uh, interesting. So, so... But I mean, they want you to be logged into their game using resources. It doesn't matter if you're in a tower or on patrol somewhere. You're, you're using their resources. I don't know. By the way, I should mention that if I was going to say yes to a question I wasn't supposed to say yes to, that would probably be how I'd say it. Okay, so here's what I think. A good comment, Jez, and I'm going to turn it to Agrios. I think that it's what Jez is saying. Like you said, if there's an answer that you can't say, if there's an answer you can't say yes to, then joke around about it. Uh, but I think it's the, you know half glass full, half glass open. They want to say yes because they have plans for that, but this is not the forum for that. So I, I agree with you. Th you know what? This is why it really it really put my antenna on uh, on alert because why wouldn't you just say no? You know, if if that was you know, or I don't know. But yeah, but I, if if he's sitting there saying no to every question and yes to every question, people are going to get really bored with that. I was not at all. I was not yeah, but at he all. Di but he didn't say he didn't that's say yes and no the whole time. That's the whole point. I don't if like he would have just said yes and no, you would have been bored. <laughs> you're a good you're a good fill in with River <laughs> for River. <laughs> it it could also still just be something that they want to work out and they just haven't gotten the details yet and. Saying no comment again would be boring too. So it could just be like, I wish I could talk about it, but I can't. Now, they really can't do too much with the loader screen, anyways, though. Uh, Namco Bandai has a patent on it. It ended this year. It did? Yep, they didn't oh. renew it and it ended this year. Oh, good. Losers. Thing. Maybe we'll see some more stuff. I was like the worst patent ever for a company that went under to make because it took all the fun out of loading screen uh as randomly says we kind of need to save the last city and fight off the darkness i don't see how many games in the tower could benefit lore wise well maybe they should get rid of the soccer ball too you know like let's let's just get down to business you know why why play around at all you no, know i'd like, like to point out that during cataclysmic, apocalyptic, horrible situations, like when supplies are the most important and it's hard to get supplies through, you barely have enough room to get food and water through, they still put decks of cards and things into war zones, all right, onto the front line and stuff, because morale of your soldiers is as important as anything else. Like post-apocalyptic bug out bag situations, they suggest you have a deck of cards or something like that too, because you, you humans require entertainment. There it is. I'm way on That's board. That's why we it. have Grimward cards. <laughs> Go study up, Guardian. <laughs> Get your head out of the clouds. Um, Hedge says Luke was just having fun. Not everything is meant to lead to a deeper mystery. That's right, I, Hegemony. Uh, I I am not saying that everything he said. I'm just saying this one thing he said, is leading to a deeper mystery. Just this one. Not a, not everything. Hey, a ham sandwich. She brought up a ham sandwich. Why would you do that? Why would you maybe, do that? Maybe, maybe he goes and makes ham sandwiches during each uh, loading screen. That's a good idea. And maybe that's what you're saying. That's your time <laughs> you're supposed to go make a snack. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want something fun to do? <laughs> go go make a like, ham you know, sandwich. Go get your popcorn. It's intermission time. Uh, okay, so why don't we get to what is going on? Agrios, what is going on? All right, well, before I dip into the meat of things, I, I didn't want two little things I wanted to talk about getting buried too far I into all the new info. Um, they're, they're both kind of lighter topics. The, the first one is one that's been uh, discussed in the community, and uh, I, I think it makes a good point. Um, how do you guys feel about the fact that the 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 new Titan uh, subclass is named after a, a notorious warlock exotic? 
Uh, you know, I've been I've been thinking about this for a while, <clears throat> and it doesn't it doesn't really make it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me unless there are unless it is some it's connected somehow. But I don't know the name that some breakers. Think what's that? If it were connected somehow, I, I still think that would be weird in itself. Like yeah. this ancient lost uh, Titan art is somehow connected to the Sunbreakers. I, that that that's getting a little weird in its own right to me. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you think, Sharks? Yeah, I, I have to say it's it's kind of lame that they didn't come up with something completely different. I mean, they've done it with everything else. Why would they pretty much copy something this time around? Uh, I don't know. Somebody's probably just not thinking. Maybe they need a new proofreader. <laughs> and, and a, and a nobody Destiny noticed checker <laughs> nobody noticed well look That's out look funny. how many mistakes they've had before i mean come on uh, there's a great person to do it remy's right up there just call remy he'll come and check everything out before you uh, release it <laughs> has remy signed off on this yet <laughs> right yeah i mean See, i think a problem is they didn't really think that they were going to set up like a thematic name for these new subclasses to fit with the other ones because they didn't know there was going to be such a holdover for them. Like, uh, another argument for against the Sunbreaker name is that it doesn't fit Defender and it doesn't fit Striker. So it should just Wait, be like, I'm break oh. that up. And to the same note, I would say that the Night Stalker doesn't fit either because Gunslinger and Blade Dancer both reference the weapon. And Night Stalker doesn't. Do, do we actually know that these are, like, completely confirmed that this is how it's going to be on release? I mean, you know, they they change things all the time. They do. They, they, do they have given us everything with that clause that it, it is always able for change. But, I mean, they've hands down told us these, these are the names of the things. They printed it on everything. Well, I mean, they did that same thing before release. It, you know, like one of them, uh, what was it? It used to be the, the, uh, the Defender Codex and the Striker Codex. Like, like they, they used to call them different things. I'm trying to think of another one, uh, a good example. It was like Ghost Gun. Or no, but that was the name of the power. Uh, no, they were like uh, it's either they were going with golden gun, ghost gun, and I think it might have been silver gun or something at one time. It was something weird. Interesting. Uh, okay, so why don't you in the chat if you have a better idea than Sunbreaker? Why don't you post it down there and we'll discuss it. So, sharks, do you have a better a better one? Uh, flame hammer. I mean, I don't know that. <laughs> flame just hammer. Just something simple. Yeah. Uh, because I actually was thinking about this. Why couldn't they just come up with? Uh, why couldn't they just come up with a different name than that? And the be only better one that I could come up with that's probably not better is Sun Smasher. Like that. That sounded a little yeah, bit. I like that. That's a little bit too, different. Yeah. Uh, as Jen mentioned. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, it should be something uh, like much something that the Titans can pronounce, so it has to be one syllable, <laughs> preferably. <laughs> but something something like just Breaker or uh, right. or uh, trying to think of other words yeah. for... Just look up I, synonyms I was thinking, for hammer. I was thinking like slugger, you know, batter. <laughs> like well... I mean, I, I think they could have, uh, I mean, you could have just went with something like along the lines of use the word flame or something like that, been called it like the flame smasher or flame breaker or, you know, just another, or like the soul hammer or I mean, I always call it soul hammer, the soul smasher or the, you know, the soul breaker, just a different word. So it wasn't exactly saying the exact name of another warlock exotic. Or, like Jez mentioned before, you could stick with the naming convention that's already in place for Titans, that they don't mention their element at all, and simply say Striker, Defender, and Breaker. Oh, man. I really like that one. That one's probably the best. Breaker Titan? Mind you, in my mind, it should probably reference the fact that you throw hammers. So, like... Hammer Brothers? Shot, <laughs> shot putter. I don't know. <laughs> Flinger. There we go. <laughs> Echo Doctrine says Sun Stud. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Main says The Incinerator. Noob Cannon says Apollo's Rage. Mystic Rose says Sun Bear Titan. Sun Bear. I actually like Sun Bear. 
I think that that one wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> we have enough barrier issues. This is true. The bad thing about it is that every single, every single name that any one of us has suggested or has been typed in that chat is better than Sunbreaker Titan for this role. <laughs> and you know, it's what, okay, so what I feel sad about this is that I think Sunbreaker is an amazing name, uh, and I think that it fits that role so nicely. Like, I think that if it had not been this infamous piece of exotic warlock gear, that it would have been more than fine. What the problem is, is that they should have named those gauntlets something else. <laughs> well, I, what what if you know the so you know the hunters learned how to blink from warlocks, and what if these titans learn this new power from these gauntlets? They are exotic, you know. There's something right. special, I and mean, that that would be kind of cool, I think, if it was tied into lore that way. But we'll we'll just have to see, I guess, with the the way the story plays out to obtain that subclass. Yeah. It, yeah, from, also, the, it, from the appearance of it, it seems almost as though they've implied that our guardians may be even traveling back in time during these uh, excursions for the subclasses. Yeah, that would be pretty. Do fancy. you guys remember when subclasses were called focuses? I do, I do, and I still, I still talk about them. I still use that word, that terminology, um, and it, it's funny because when I went down to that thing before the launch. I, I said that to to um, Lars. I said that to Lars. I said, "Oh, what about this focus?" And he laughed and he said, "Oh, you're still calling them focuses. We, you know, we just call them subclasses now." And it's so it's been that long since they've wanted to change that, and and I still can I still call them a focus sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, is did you have a reason for bringing this up, Jez? Well, it's just they have precedent for having builds with, uh, well, no, actually, I think it was already changed for the alpha, but they have precedent for having this big info, information explosion of information or whatever, and they have certain things detailed that they later change, like just simple names, and I still remember there was a post uh, when in the alpha that they were people were upset that the sniper rifle called Pompeii said that it was named after the it was named after the the volcano or no it was named after the town I can't remember I can't remember how it went eh, it's been so long right it, there was, yeah right there was a sniper and it said it was named after it was named after the city and it said it was named after the volcano right and then in the beta they changed it and I made a post about it and apparently they already had it flagged during the alpha, they just never changed it until after the alpha. The writer so. who actually actually made the mistake it, it responded in humili- responded in humiliation <laughs> to Jens's post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a while ago, actually. Uh, moving on. Moving on. <clears throat> uh, one other thing that uh, came up in the community this week, outside the weekly update, that I thought was worth talking about was someone posted a list of things that people who have played Destiny haven't done. And it's uh, kind of interesting. It's a, it's a list of statistics based off the, the trophies on the PSN network. And um, so 5.8% of players couldn't figure out how to repair their first jump ship, as in they didn't complete their first mission in Destiny. How many? 44.5.8%. 5.8% didn't make it through the first mission? Mission. Or story mission, correct. It's amazing. 44.7% of players gave up on Raul before their 25th date. As in they haven't, uh, they didn't even turn in 25 engrams to Raul. How many, uh, what was the percentage of that? 44.7%. Holy crap. Did Can not they... even decrypt 25 engrams in the game. Wow. So almost half like closing in on half of all people who play Destiny have not even turned in 25 engrams. Yeah, well, that, that puts up then how many people are we saying that's actually playing Destiny then? That kind of gives you some real numbers maybe because, you know, we've heard, oh, such and such uh, millions of people are, are, are Destiny I've, players, right. but obviously they're not all playing. Exactly. Um, 
66.8% of players haven't experienced the exotic side of the game, as in 68.8% of registered Destiny players have never gotten exotic. Wow. 37.3% of registered Destiny players haven't experienced the joys of AFK players since they've never completed a strike. What number? 37.3%. Crazy. 79.4% of registered Destiny players uh, pulled a hamstring and couldn't farm enough materials to upgrade their legendaries. They've never upgraded, fully upgraded a legendary. It's almost yeah. 80%. Uh, this is crazy. This is totally crazy. Almost 80% of, of, of people who have played registered players have never fully upgraded a legendary. Like, like how do you... Yeah, you're right, Sharks. This really is getting into real numbers. Uh, yeah, how it's, many it's more? It's numbers we probably don't want to hear either. It's going to make us sad. <laughs> well, but see, this is just it. I think that I think that it, it instead of making us sad, it should really surprise us because um, because the community is still so active. I still know a ton of people who are playing this game. Like I, I can't say the same thing for some games. Some games okay, I've well, played. What's that? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, some games I've played for like a month total, and then that's it. You know, I I am done. I don't ever play it again. Uh, and this just, I don't know. I Is there a way to find out how many engrams we've decrypted total? Um, you could probably figure out an average based upon how much, uh, how much rep you get from decrypting them and oh. looking at your total rank and figuring it out that way on some sort of average basis, but you're only going to get some sort of average because you get different amounts of rep for different color engrams. Interesting. Um, and there was a point at which we started getting half as much uh, in, the right. very, in the very beginning that engrams were giving us a lot more. Now, now something I, I need to mention to put in perspective is that 20%, that would be the number of people, what, what was the last one I just gave there with 80%, it was uh, uh, having completely upgraded a legendary. 20% of, what it was the last number figure we heard, 6 point some million registered users, 20% of that many million registered users is still a lot of people playing Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Like 20% of 6 million is a huge number still. I don't get figured it offhand because all my other electronics are taken up at the moment. If somebody has calculator handy, you can punch that in. <laughs> but that's still a lot of people playing. Uh, when you said calculator handy, for some reason my brain shut off at hand. And it sounded like you said if somebody has calculator hand. And I thought that this might be <laughs> like, a, like an ailment. You know, like, well, if you have calculator hand, you can way do this. And somebody's got hundreds of fingers on one hand <laughs> <laughs> and are able to do mathematics real quick. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, don't get calculator hand un unless you're an accountant. <laughs> well, maybe is, that's how uh, you get it. This is kind of a weird tangent. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's 1.2 million, by the way, is 20%. So there you go. Uh, I think, that I think many people have a, have at least fully upgraded a legendary. So it, we're still talking about a lot of people. So it puts it in perspective a little bit. But it's still interesting that that many people have you know logged in and played Destiny and never made it to the point where they even got one exotic complete. You, you know, the, still... the thing is, is it would be a lot easier uh, to really judge who is playing still by who's completed, um, like um, taking King first mission or something like that. Because, you know, the these numbers here, it, it's so hard to judge, you know, how much, I mean, well, I don't know. Well, it's not especially hard to judge, when you, but... I mean, when you consider that 40, what is it, 47% didn't complete the first mission. I mean, that, that no, throws out a lot of it. Percent. Only 5.8% oh. didn't complete the first mission. You're well, thinking... What was many people didn't decrypt at least 25 engrams, which oh, was 44.7% okay. only decrypted less than 25 engrams. So that chops, like, I think what you're saying, though, is that chops off, you know, nearly half the players right off yeah, the bat. Yeah, I mean, like, if you didn't you, decrypt you can 25 almost, engrams, you're not playing Destiny. <laughs> yeah, almost every statistic after that one, you can just take off half of them, and that's a more clear statistic of who, who got to that point. Right. That's a very good point. And I have two more stats here. 36.4% uh, of players respectful enough not to check other guardians without their consent. 
Uh, so 36.4% of players uh, never inspected another Guardian in the game. And 77.3% uh, of players uh, don't know why it works is mad at them in the expansion because they've never completed a raid. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's interesting that nearly just a tiny bit higher number of people um, have not fully upgraded the exotic as the raid. Like the raid number and the legendary, I mean, I'm sorry, not exotic, legendary number correlate to the fact where if you've leveled up at a legendary all the way, you've also likely beat a raid. So that's an interesting thing that if you've made it to the point where you've upgraded a legendary all the way, you've also pushed it to the point where you've beaten the raid. Well, and you think about it, by the time you really I mean, could fully upgrade a legendary, you were almost at Vaults of Glass anyway when the game launched. So that's that's not too far off of um, really a, a good pace of where you were at with the vanilla game. Well, you also have to take, you have to take something else into consideration that there are players like Agrios that wouldn't upgrade his legendaries for the longest time. Yeah, but I had still updated one, and my armor I updated all, all the way. Is this counting armor also? This is legendaries, period, yeah. Legendaries, yep. Just flat. Mr. Main wants to know, are they looking at per character or per account? It would be per account, because this is a trophy account. count. This is tied to the trophies on PSN Network, right. Now, now, what I was just saying before about the, those percentages lining up between the legendaries and the raid, what I was saying is if you've gotten to the point, it looks like that that's the mean number. Like uh, the 77, some per, 77 to 80%, those are the people who dropped off and aren't playing the game anymore. So about 20% of the people are at least dedicated enough that they're going through the, all the way through the end game activities and Destiny in a nutshell is kind of what I'm saying. Got it. Got it, got it. And that's crazy. And I was, uh, it, at one point recently, I was looking at the uh, those achievements, those trophies on the um, on the PlayStation, and I, I looked at these numbers, and I thought, this just can't be right. Uh, and then I imagined that there was, well, what about the offline people? And then I realized you can't have, you. there is no offline destiny. There's nobody out there has bought this game. You know, there's no swaths of people that are not being represented here. Every time you've done anything in Destiny, it's, it's been with the permission and under the supervision of the server uh, and the people at the, uh, you know, that command center at Bungie. So it's, I mean, no, this is it. To take note that this is also going to likely include uh, many, many accounts generated for convention type things. Although it wouldn't count the ones that were generated and only used for private test builds, because that would be that's a different set of well non-existent trophies. Maybe we should. But there's still a, probably a large number of, of fake accounts created for demonstration purposes on the game. So that might account for like that 5.8 percent of people that never completed the first story mission. A good chunk of that might literally be, you know, those type of accounts. Well, maybe we should do a shout to Bungie and and try to find out how many. Um, come, come! Oh shoot! The the complete uh, everybody that's completed the game fully. You know when they actually release those emblems, maybe we can get a true count of how many people are actually playing. I mean, well, that's a extent. great point. I'm sure they'll tell us that number, and that's that's really going to be a good indicator of how many people are really playing Destiny. How many of those emblems are in fact given out? I would love to know. I would love to know. Uh, that's a great metric that I would, uh, I would love to see. Um, anything else on this, or moving on? Moving on. Oh, wait a second. Oh. As randomly says, I still need to do skull loss in three sixties, but our fire teams is literally hell. End game activities aren't fun without a conversation, uh, and I still need to do my skull loss on 360 slash Xbox One, and so I'm I'm hoping to get it done here sometime in the future. Um, but why don't you add me <clears throat> and anyone else out there listening who's interested in adding me on the Xbox? Uh, J I M space B E A R D Y. Uh, I just don't I just don't have enough friends on the uh, on the Xbox. All the time people are playing on PlayStation, and it feels great uh, in its 
it's such a different game. It's such a different game having people to play with uh, and not having people to play with. And it's on top of that, such a different game having people that you're comfortable playing with versus, okay, well, sure, you know, I, I see X Pat on, uh, and I know that if I asked him if he wanted to do something, we would do it, but I don't know, I'm not, I haven't struggled through hours and hours and hours of, of screaming kids in front of him, so <laughs> so it's something I don't want to submit <clears throat> a ton of people to. Um, we just, like, to consider those extra Nightfall modifiers. <laughs> right. Right, and it's it's just uh, the whole fire team, you know, is drugged down at some point. <laughs> um, yes, moving on. I think Agrios has muted himself. Yes, I did mute myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Hotfix 1.2.0.5 hit earlier this week. It's the one about the Husk of the Pit and the Nepal Rewards. Now, the Nepal Rewards uh, are going to be coming out in an email later. To my knowledge, no one's yet received these emails yet. Uh, in this patch, the uh, as far as weapons go, they fixed an issue where packing the Packing Heat Achievement slash Trophy could not be unlocked by newly acquired exotic weapons. So apparently, if you hadn't already received the Packing Heat uh, trophy, um, the new exotics were not unlocking that initially. Which actually, interestingly enough, may have affected some of those uh, statistics we went over earlier. There was one about that. They uh, also fixed an issue where the Husk of the Pit drops were disabled. People can once again obtain the Husk of the, husk of the Pit. It was uh, quite an interesting situation for a minute there where people were able to more easily obtain the Crux of Crota than the Husk of the Pit. People uh, had Crux of the Crota waiting for Husk of the, husk of the Pit and couldn't get one. But uh, now they've gone and uh, increased the drop rates for the Husk of the Pit from the Blades of Crota to 150% of what they were previously. Uh, for PvP, they updated the House of Wolves control playlist to include the following maps with a lower weight in the rotation. Uh, Rusted Land, Shores of Time, Pantheon, Exodius Blue, and... Uh, uh, for the Sony players only, though, on the Exodius Blue map, that is. The, they updated the House of Wolves Clash playlist to include the following maps with a lower weight in the rotation. Firebase Delphi, Twilight Gap, Blind Watch, and once again for Sony, Exodius Blue. Um, the Inferno and Doubles playlist now have different tuning values for ammo, ammo crates. Special ammo initial spawn time and respawn intervals have been changed to 180 seconds. Uh, a max of three special ammo crates will now be placed at any one time. And uh, heavy ammo crates now spawn only once per match at 300 seconds. And that, that was for Inferno and Doubles playlists. Uh, in the tower, Tess Everest is temporarily leaving. Uh, a, a kiosk terminal can now be found near Eva Levante, the uh, emblem vendor, in the north tower across from the speaker that contains Tess's old inventory of special order items. Uh, the Nepal Aid Shader and Emblems have been added to the game. The redemption codes, like I mentioned, will soon be sent via email. Uh, it's used to place uh, the orders on the Bungie store. And uh, these items will be found at that kiosk that we just mentioned uh, above there, that we, uh, is over there by the Emblem vendor now. Uh, on the technical side of things, they fixed a potential crash when closing the vendor screen, fixed a very rare case, case in which an account could be blocked by a weasel error on sign-on, and uh, fixed issues with suspend and resume handling on the Xbox One. Uh, anybody have anything interesting to say about any of this stuff? <clears throat> okay. I'll go first. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I was... I, I have been thinking about this since Destiny, since I first started running through the missions in Destiny, and um, there was a point where you go into that, uh, you need to find the the keys to the war mind, I think it is, and you go into this, this area that is also in the Omnigol strike, and you have to destroy that, that, Russian satellite thing or whatever it is, and then, and then the the mission ends. Um, something that I haven't seen in Destiny that I was really pleased to see 
but wouldn't be surprised to see in the future is a guarding aspect. Uh, there's many, many missions and many, many video games where it's not you that has to live only, it's another target has to live. And I thought that you had to defend the uh, ghost while he was downloading this information, but you don't see this at any point. Like, as long as one person makes it through the mission, the mission is a success. There is no additional, um, there is no additional target that needs to live through. And I think it would be really cool if Tess just up and quit. Like, if there was a story behind this, if Tess just up and quit and she wanted to become a guardian and you had to take her out on these missions, uh, and then she had to survive. Um, what do you think about this, Sharks? Is this a mechanic that, that it troubles you and you're happy to not see? Or is this a mechanic that you think that could make Destiny really cool? Or, um, you know, what, what's your thoughts on this? No, I, I think adding stuff like that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it goes back to what what people have been saying about Destiny from the beginning. is like we're, we're mutations the way they are. Well, I don't know. I think I think the Taken King is is going to change a lot, and I'm I'm happy to see all these changes that we've been, you know, like Game Informer, all the stuff that they've been releasing about stuff that we we hoped was in the game. I think that they can still add stuff like this into the game, also. Yeah, uh, as randomly says, please no, please no. I've played through enough uh, Resident Evil. I'm assuming Re. Uh, and Ashley is a pain, but depending on the AI, it could be good or bad. I absolutely agree. I think it would be funny if you went into this mission with this person and she wants to, you know, she wants to be a guardian. So she wants to kill these things, but she's unable to kill all of these things. So you have to kill these things to keep her alive. But then if you kill too many, she says to you, save some for me. Uh, but then she keeps getting overwhelmed. So you have to go against what she's asking you to do. I think that that would be a really cool interaction. Uh, but yeah, I, I really, the bottom line also for me as randomly is that please, no, please, no. I just, I've been in too many situations where it's like, how am I supposed to defend this person? What if she runs into this area where there's just a bunch of boomers? You know, it's it's, it's going to be horrible. Yeah, but uh, you know, there's other things that you could do. I mean, we already have, we have the ghost that's running around with us. And, you know, at times the ghost lights up the areas and whatnot. We could all, uh, they could always implement something along the lines of, oh, if you don't, go to point A and turn off this machine or this disruptor that your ghost isn't going to work until, until it happens. You're going to be fighting in more twilight darkness. I mean, there's a lot of ways that they could add stuff like this since we already actually have an AI and there, and it's an AI that they're expanding on because we already know that they can, it's going to be able to do other things in the game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hegemony says, nah, don't like it. Tess should set up a shop in the wild, give her an outpost. That sounds great. That sounds really cool. It, this uh, brings me back to something like when you, when you drop down onto the planet, <clears throat> you always, or, or at least as far as I can tell, you always drop down into an area that is marked by that forces of the city. But it's always like this little, it's like a, a campfire if a bunch of dude bros uh, just left all their crap there for somebody else to clean up. <laughs> like, it doesn't look very much like, you know, we've claimed this area, this one area is safe. I'd like to see uh, some kind of, you know, like a, like a fort, like a small fort, maybe even just a wall where people are hiding behind, you know, to, to open the path for other guardians. Uh, so that could be something really cool too. But then again, we're talking about you know, all of these destinations can be, um, you can just cruise through them on your, um, on your speeder bike pretty quickly. So I don't know how awesome that would be or what that would feel like. But, uh, so what about you, um, Jez, what do you think about this? What do you think about the idea of having to protect somebody in a mission? So as someone that's played World of Warcraft, no, escort missions are the worst. <laughs> However, uh, they they can do it better. Uh, it all depends on if they make sure that she can handle her own, but she's not overpowering. 
I, I hesitated to use. Line. I hesitated to use the term escort mission because I, I didn't want people to get the wrong idea about no, what we we're talking about. No, not that kind of escort. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we know all about Tess and the ship, right? You know, they're both uh, a little one. Hedge says he wants to see evidence that we have taken back some areas, and this is I'm on board with that absolutely. Uh, Crimson Warlock, what do you think about this? Uh, having to guard some kind of AI or, or getting to even hang out with some kind of AI uh, other than this ghost who talks to you through your helmet. You know, I, I have to agree with a lot of people just that um, whenever it comes to escort missions, the designers, you know, if like world world of Warcraft, for example, since I did play it, um, you know, some of these NPCs, they're, they're kind of higher level NPCs, but once you know, you have to escort them. They they can't seem to do anything. Um, <laughs> or like Assassin's Creed, for example. You know, you're trying to uh, escort a couple of people, and and some of them are assassins themselves, but they can't seem to do anything. Um, so it is one of those escort? where they have to do it right. Did you ever do the mission in Tanaris with the turtle, where you had to uh, escort a turtle? across the entire map and he goes so slow i, I don't know I what tenaris is oh you're years. talking to him yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's a it's like a desert a desert zone it's one of the largest ones in the yeah. game and it was so, a pain in the butt like it if you were on if you were walking it would probably take you five to ten real life minutes to get across the entire zone and now imagine that you have to escort uh, an NPC that's going not lengthways across, going diagonally across this square zone, so the farthest <laughs> distance you have to go, and it goes slower than walking speed. Yep. That and, was you know, one one of the long. worst things, too, and this was, this was one of my gripes about the escort missions um, in World of Warcraft, was, like, the NPCs that you had to escort were, like, on aggressive behavior. And so whenever they'd see something, whether it was a small threat or a huge threat, like they'd run right at it and kill themselves. <laughs> Just like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, it was really, babysitting. You did not have to run off the path to go attack that giant monster. Like, and then it, instead of running like towards the, where they're supposed to be going, they'll walk all the way back to where they decided where they to left run the off. Path. From. Where they yeah. left the path, which could be like half a mile away at times, depending on how long it took you to kill this monster without letting your NPC die. Uh, you know, when I when I mention this this kind of game type, uh, I imagine like a competent version of what we're of what we're all thinking of. Uh, you know, something that something that would put you in in charge, but something like like you know she could turn to you and say hey you know okay well what about those guys over there where do you think we should set up uh to snipe them or something and then you could choose a location and based on that location the story would continue like maybe some dregs on pikes will show up uh and you didn't expect that or if you choose that direction i don't know i i just i'm imagining all the the good things that could could happen in it because because bungie is so good at what they do so uh so yeah i definitely see whatever what all of you are saying agrios uh what do you think about this game type what do you think about tess wanting to become a guardian uh and not hanging out in that tower anymore uh and what do you think about everything i think you're muted again there buddy i think that i don't i think it was muted and i think that i don't like uh AI escort missions where you have to guard the escort because for all the reasons we've already been talking about, like no one's quite seemed to be able to nail the AI effectively. Now, if the goal is not to defend that AI, if the if if it's a story mechanism and they're like you you fight through the lines of Hive and you find you know Commander Zavala pinned in a corner and he fights with you through the next little wave of a strike, but his life meter is irrelevant to you. He's just a bonus weapon on your side for story's sake. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so kind of like Halo Reach then. 
Like, if you have to escort, like, you meet him up and you escort him down the hall to a point where he has to import a code, and then he's like, move on, Guardians, I got this, and you move down the hall, and it, you, his life was never a priority of yours. That's great. I <laughs> also you, think... You don't want to have the Marines from Halo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just die, and then you're like, I thought you were with me. I don't know why this tank is no longer has these ride-alongs. And uh, I, I think, however, defending inanimate objects is great. Like, like you were initially, when you were talking about your story, in the beginning you are talking about the, the one War My mission where you go in and read that uh, device to save it from the, the Fallen or whatever. I totally thought the first times I was playing those missions that that thing's health was my was my responsibility. Like, I guarded that thing with my life the first times I fought through that mission. Right. And then I get to the end of the mission, and they're like, now destroy it! I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, but you, you guys, you keep saying, oh, you don't want an AI to defend because you're worried about how it's going to react. There are a lot of games that have an AI with you um, while you're doing specific things. For instance, um, Drake's Fortune. And you're going, you're you're in a car, and you're you're with somebody else, and and they're sitting there talking, and they're interacting with what's going on. I mean, they could easily implement something like that to give you more, uh, so that you're not just in there shooting and and never having anybody chat back at you. Does and anyone think- know? <clears throat> does anyone know if Eris Morn's name was Eris Morn before she? went into the uh, Crota's End? I believe so, but I'm not for certain. I'm not certain. Uh, because <clears throat> because Mr. Groves says, what if she was a Guardian who stepped back, but now something has forced her to go on one more mission? And then I immediately thought, man, what if Eris Morn was her sister, but she didn't know about it uh, until it was like, oh, your name is really... You know, Jessica Everest, and we're sisters, and now she feels like she has to go do something about this, or, you know, I, I don't know. So, yeah, I was just curious to know if, if Eris Morn's name was was that before she went down there. Because, uh, I don't know, I could see gaining <clears throat> a third eye. I could see gaining three eyes uh, from some monsters that are constantly bleeding out this tarry gross and renaming myself so that people didn't didn't think I was that person from before. I could just start anew as this gross person in the tower. Well, well I mean, no, they, we know who or Eris Morn was before the mission. Whether her name was Eris Morn or not, like, they, they know she went down in. They know the names of all the people she went down in with. And, like, yeah, she it, came it mentions Eris and Tolan like, together a lot. Right. Like, so her name was Eris before. Whether it was Eris Morn, I, I couldn't tell you for certain. Whether she changed her last name at some point for some reason, I, I wouldn't have any idea. I kind of um, feel like if you named yourself that before you went into this <laughs> this thing, you're kind of you're kind of screwing yourself over. <laughs> most people don't actually name themselves, so <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Agrios. <laughs> well, okay, okay, <laughs> right. I named myself correct, but um, what what I was going to say before though too was I, I would really love to see defending of inanimate objects. I'd like to see just more objectives other than wait for Dinkle Buck to finish trying to open this door that's apparently not as difficult as DOS, but you know still takes forever. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I would really like to see other sorts of things involving those sorts of goals, like along the lines of alerts. Like maybe like you're in. Um, any mission that you have in any type of game function that's not a strike, not a raid, and that you isn't the first time you're completing it. And you could get alert, an alert like from the tower, like Commanders of Allah, Urgence, you know, we need your support here. And for a limited time, you can go to like a public, it's almost like a public event that you can travel to. Like, it, it, you know, a blip pops up on one of the maps that's not normally there, and it's red, and you go to it, and there's some sort of like defense mission. You know, you, you come in, and I think it would be cool if there were even... Um, even if they didn't have any real impact what was going on, if they were just scenery, I would love to teleport into somewhere where there's, you know, a dozen guardians, like, on ridges, all firing and at, at Hive and stuff that are already there. Like, I'd like to see some battle zone type things like that. Interesting. I, I agree. Uh, well, you're going to have space battle. 
I mean, that might just be the animation, but stuff like that's supposed to be going on. All right, Jez, you said you fell down the rabbit hole. Oh yeah, I was like, I was trying to find the the exact wording from the Ares Morn like Grimoire card, and somehow landed on someone's theory that Zer is actually Toland. That on the first quest for Bad Juju, Toland's legacy, we're told Toland, a once esteemed warlock, was ex- exiled from civilization for his obsession, and in the Grimoire card for Crow's End, Eris Morn finds Toland after his exile and enlists him to fight Korda. Toland tells us that Crota is a shadow in their world, and that his real being exists in an alternate dimension. <laughs> this is weird, weird theories that come from either a lack of information or too much random information, and it's amazing. <laughs> Sounds like too much Red Bull and thought to me. Well, Sounds when like- people put several things together that actually don't fit together, but still sound kind of right it's always awesome until someone's like no 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 he's dead and then Crazy. it's like oh wait well, didn't we confirm that oh no wait Tolan was oh no that was a cyrus that we confirmed wasn't dead yeah cyrus is not dead all right all right moving on Okay, moving on. So, so now into the, the weekly update. Uh, Bungie starts this week's update by letting us know, aside from uh, Game Informer's remaining stories, how we'll find out the final details about the Taken King before launch. They say, The information you crave will come straight from the mouths of the creators during an on-site inspection of their creations, and we'll do it live. We're planning a series of broadcasts to brief you on the rising Taken threat and show you what you'll need to know to survive the next evolution. It'll be a fun look into the eye again. It'll be fun to look you in the eye again and show off what we've been working on. Um, like last time, it'll take place on Twitch over a series of Wednesdays. Here's the lineup. Um, Destiny Year 2. Uh, the, the reveal uh, of uh, how will your, your own personal highlights from the first year of Destiny translate into the second. What will your Guardian's lifestyle be like in the new and improved tower? How will your Guardian become a more powerful snowflake over the course of your next journey? Is it true that character level and light will rise in exciting new ways? All will be revealed and explained. Pro tip! Don't dismantle anything until the full developer briefing. This is going to take place on August 19th at 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, it's going to be hosted by executive producer Mark Noseworthy, senior design lead Tyson Green, and uh, the community questions are going to be sourced live by Cosmo, the former uh, lead mod from the subreddit and our new community manager. Uh, Do we want to talk about this, or should I finish listing the the other ones before we discuss this? Uh, So this this is the first one. On the 19th, the next Wednesday? It's the first one. Takes place on the, on the 19th. It's the Destiny Year 2 reveal. Okay. And what what's the next one? The next one is Strike the Dreadnought. It's uh, going to be discussing the, the strike, uh, what, it's ni- what it's like to infiltrate the Dreadnought, what surprises do the Taken have for us in combat, how are the boss battles different in the Taken King, join us for a new strike against a rival Cabal invasion force. See the new Guardian subclasses in action. Witness the action that will begin year two. And this one's hosted by design lead James Sai and uh, Fruit Nation ambassador Mr. Fruit. That one takes place on August 26th, again at 11 a.m. Pacific. And the final one uh, is going to be the Court of Oryx. Uh, What mysteries lie in wait within the cavernous hall of the Dreadnought. How can Guardians plunder the treasures secreted away in its hideous labyrinth? Come along with us on a patrol of the newest destination in your director. Learn how Guardians can instigate public events. Behold the challenges and rewards that await you on board the capital ship commanded by Oryx. Uh, this one's going to take place on September 2nd, again at 11 a.m. Pacific, and it's going to be hosted by designer Ben Womack, Scarab Lord Luke Smith, 
and Cool Table Ambassador Laced Up Lauren. Uh, so th these are going to be our reveals. I'm actually kind of personally apprehensive to uh, tune into the second two, as in I really enjoy going into a lot of these things dark. Yeah, that's going to be uh, <clears throat> that's going to be a problem uh, because what you'll basically have to do is just cut yourself off from all social media for two weeks. Like I can see, <clears throat> I can see doing it for the period of twenty four hours. I can shut off my phone and not and not talk to anybody <clears throat> for twenty four hours. But the fact is that we have this Destiny podcast, and I'm certain there will be some sort of details about what happened on these live streams in the Bungie Weekly Update that we talk about. So I, I am totally in agreement with you, Agrios. I, I would much, much, much rather <clears throat> wait and play it myself and see how it works out um, but I just, I just can't, I just want to fill my face with as See, much me, destiny as I can. To me, visuals are much more important than brief descriptions. Like you can tell me, you know, till you're blue in the face that, you know, on the strike, you're going to fight taken versions of this and that, and you're going to get this new weapon and you're going to fight this, uh, dark blade guy at the end, like they've told us already. And I mean, that doesn't really ruin anything for me. Okay. So I knew I was going to fight some boss at the end. I knew I was going to have to do some things in the way it's that visual experience that I, uh, I fear being ruined. I have yeah, to but do, do it. You, do you really think that you're going to, you're going to miss out on that much? They're talking about what they're adding this time around is, more than both the DLCs. I mean, you're talking about an awful lot of time, many, many hours to go through and play that stuff. Their streams are like 60 minutes long, and a lot of it's BSing with the people that are on there. You're not, they're not going to show that much stuff. I, I wouldn't more, worry about it. But it's more, but, but it's, it's, see, they're, they're, the third one, for instance, they're going on patrol of the, of the Dreadnought, so that's going to ruin the patrol of the Red Knot visu Dreadnought visually to me. And they're going to be talking and discussing how you unlock the, the secrets to, you know, the these special ones. So I'm sure they're probably going to reveal one secret or something, so at least something little is going to get spoiled on that one. And, and then the second one, they're they're doing that strike through and they're talking about the strikes being a lot more maybe puzzle intensive and things like that and i don't know that i want to see that whole strike the whole way through yeah yeah good luck with that <clears throat> good luck with that i'm just going to uh i'm just going to accept my place in the uh, circle of life and just watch it the uh, first one i'm very 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 interested in i mean that one by a long margin is the most important one to me regardless even if i weren't afraid of seeing the other two i mean that first one's where we're going to find out the nitty-gritty the first one's where we're going to find out the info that we need to know to plan what we're doing with our current weapon and armor sets plan what we're doing you know setting up our materials and such going into the the new expansion the what the one that will stop agros and i from uh hour-long discussions in front of other Guardian 1 members. <laughs> hey, we'll be getting to that. We'll be getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I feel like I feel like it's okay for me to look at all this stuff because it's not the raid. <clears throat> and I'm excited about building up for the raid, you know, teammate-wise and weapons-wise and gear-wise. And so as long as they don't ruin that, which they haven't previously. I'm, I'm hoping that they do another thing like they did with Crota, where it's here is some time for you to live in this world, and here is the starting line. Um, I think that that's going to be awesome. And, and maybe that's where I draw my line um, as far as what information... Because, because if any of these I don't want to look at, it's this first one. Because I would love, love, love to go into the tower and just explore for myself what has changed. You know? So, I don't know. Hedge says he's Mind not watching you. them. The and I think that, that has more to do with uh, his lack of internet. <laughs> or his internet watching at a, at a coffee shop. <laughs> or maybe it's because it's 4 o'clock in the morning there <laughs> where he is. Uh, what were you going to say, Jez? So... 
I'm also kind of two minds that, yeah, I would kind of like that punch, but at the same time, I don't want to be the one that's like, oh, where do I go to upgrade this weapon? And then have to search around for, like, the kiosk that replaced Tess or something. Um, something like that. And the, the, all the, uh, patrol ones and the Court of Orcs, it all will kind of remove that punch the first time you go there. But like, I honestly, think, oh, I think it's, I think it's far enough out that your mind is going to forget some of the details and you're going to, rem- you're going to get that punch back if you wait. Or if you if you see it, you'll still have that punch. Oh, I'm finally here. I'm finally doing it. Like honestly, some of the most fun I've had in Destiny are the blind runs of doing the the new the new materials, like the first time through and things like that. Or some of the, by a large margin, the, the most fun I have in the game, like the going doing the raids blind. I, I could recommend that higher to anybody else. Like that's that's by far probably some of the most fun I've had in Destiny. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. <clears throat> we need to find another three for certain. Oh, um, we got lots of one there. So okay, so then, <clears throat> so Court of Oryx. Um, what is this? This is a player initiated public event. Uh, I think that that's going to be really cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Jez? Well, in the other places, they're invading you, but this time you get to invade them, so maybe that's what they mean. What do you mean? Like, all, all the aliens in the public events, they're invading and, like, dropping off the mining machines or dropping off a devil tank. This time you're going into a place that no one's been and you're messing up their day. Oh man, you're totally right. Each of these locations that we visited previously uh, w- were our <clears throat> were where we our stopping grounds were, and they've come in and taken it. You're right. You're right. Probably no human has ever been on the uh, that dreadnought before. At least not in a non taken form or as food. <laughs> sadly, uh, that's really interesting. Uh, it's a really interesting take on it. What do you think, Agrios? Yeah, so now we're going to be the bastards calling in an extraction crew on the dreadnought, and there's going to be you know these 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 taken fall hive running around the dreadnought and whatnot are going to get an alert. You know their their screen's going to darken and it'll be guardians incoming, and <laughs> they're going to get a public event against us. Right, that's that's so <laughs> funny, sharks. Well, I th- I think it's great that it's going to be changed up every time too. I mean, you can go to the same public event. And you're going to be fighting different creatures. I I think it's long, long overdue, and this is it's going to be awesome. I agree, <clears throat> Crimson Warlock. All right, he's not back yet. Um, I this... am back. I was oh, okay. muted. Okay. Darn mute buttons, op. Um, <laughs> um, the uh, the first thing I want to say. Um, about what we've learned through the idea and stuff is um, I've been excited that uh, the little tidbit that I've noticed is that we're the ones placing the patrol beacons in the dreadnought. Um, It was mentioned in one of the articles that that's what we do when we get up there. And I'm super excited for that because it it feels like we're finally the vanguard, you know, where we're pushing forward and we're doing these things. Um, but uh, the next comment I have for the Dreadnought and what we see there is my hope is is that when you come across aliens fighting each other that they don't all turn on you immediately once you shoot one bullet into the fray when they've been fighting for like 10 minutes. Okay, so you bring up a really good point and something I wanted to talk about uh, was uh, this Game Informer article. Uh, One of the guys said the combat experience is more varied than I expected. You're running into Hive and take him, but there's also a bunch of Cabal on board, the Dreadnought, engaged in their own fight against Oryx's forces. I 
I feel like because we are responding to this call that we will not be fighting these cabal. Do you think that this is Crimson Warlock? Well, we're... Oh. Um, they, I mean, they're still enemies to us. I mean, we're, I think if, if they Are don't they immediately start us? shooting us, like, we're going to be neutral. Like, I mean, I, I'm hoping that we are, we're number two on the list if there's Hyman taken around. Like, I hope they focus on them first. And then us, right. like, if it's a showdown between the Cabal and then our Guardian. It's going to be like the little I, wars that you have when you go to Mars and, and when you go to other places that that you have the big major... I mean, they have it on both the Cosmodrome and uh, and uh, on Mars where, where they all come out and they fight each other. I agree with uh, Crimson about how I, I wish they would more prioritize correctly in battle. Or like if I take cover and there's you know a hive standing next to a cabal, they go back to fighting one another instead of still both just teaming up fighting on me because that doesn't make a lot of sense. But as far as your question goes, the strike on the Dreadnought, we're actually fighting a bunch of the invading cabal is the purpose of the strike on the Dreadnought that they're going to be going over. Okay, but <clears throat> what about the footage that it shows us walking up to some area and a cabal ship kind of comes up over this ridge and looks at us but does not attack, and then there's a cabal on the ground that we walk by. Like, is that it... was the first story. That, yeah, that's the first mission, and there's a reason behind kind of why they're not attacking us. I'm sure the and context think, would be helpful. Some of that we see is cinematic too. Like some of these cabal, I are, are I think you know they're cinematic, they're engineered, they're they're there for us to see a scenery, and then they run away and something happens to them. Kind of like we saw in some of the short clips on the Game Informer. There, uh, I, I think we're seeing some of them as victims. But I think if you come across like just some cabal hanging out, fighting some hive, you know they're they're still they're still going to be our enemies. We're still going to fight with those. I hope not. I hope not. I think it would be much cooler if we ran up on people, on Cabal, who were fighting the Hive and or Taken, and we helped them suppress the Hive and or Taken, and they just went about their business, said something like, Thanks, Guardian, and then took off. No, you know, we, we, we never really, you know, the, the House of Wolves, Helped us understand the Fallen a lot more because we finally had a Fallen ally um, in, in um, oh, what's his name? No, I can't think of Varix. his name. Varix. And yeah. so it would be pretty cool to maybe get a, a more neutral cabal to interact with and learn more about their culture and the reasons that they're fighting and who they are fighting. If it's us or if it's the darkness or, or whatnot. Interesting. <clears throat> I'd be interested to know, like, I don't believe there is it anywhere, but I'd be, is, I'd be interested to know if there was any any conversations on record between Cabal and humans. To my knowledge, there isn't. I know we have captured and interrogated Hive wizards, and obviously, like you mentioned, we have Varix. The Queen has subjugated a large portion of Fallen, so we've had the opportunity to directly interact with them in a, a good bit. But I, I'm not aware of us actually, you know, really communicating with the Cabal at all other than through battle. I don't know. I guess it remains to be seen. If <clears throat> if um, if Bungie wanted to do it right, they would be our allies on the on the Dreadnought. It, don't, it See, only I don't makes think, sense. I don't think, in my opinion, I mean, you know a little bit more about what I think about the whole situation. But I, in my opinion, I don't think any of these races are ever going to see us as allies. I think the only reason like Varix and those fallen were interacting with the queen is because she in fact is not a guardian. She, I mean, associates with guardians and has opened the reef to the guardians, but she's not a guardian. She's not like a servant of the traveler. And I think us as servants of the traveler are, are seen as evil incarnate practically to these other races. I think that they're just jealous. I don't think that they hate us. I don't. I don't think that they hate us at all. I, I think that they just want what the travelers' powers ha have to offer. You know. Like, I think that's the case with the fallen, but I don't think that's the case with the hive or the cabal. Well, I guess we'll find out. Did 
anyone ever like explore the concept of the cabal or not the cabal the fallen being somewhat akin to angels like See, i thought it was the fallen because they are the former versions of us we are the the children well, that are traveling right now that's, they were previously and they're fallen from that that's kind of what i'm getting at but like not so much fallen for like fallen angels but like uh in some stories they say that angels don't like humans because god's favor has turned towards humans and right. away from angels right and it seems like a similar motif to Fallen. They're angry at us because we're no, uh, we're now the chosen ones of the immoral guardians of the yeah. god. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting that they would be considered the angels of destiny. Guardian, you want yeah. to share a ham sandwich? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The currency uh, of the fallen is ham sandwiches. <laughs> uh, moving on. I mean, I, I could see the how cabal might be related to you know, to to you know, pigs in some way, shape, or form. You know, what I mean, they, they look kind of like space pigs. They're kind of grumpy. Uh, they're just they're far too put together. They're they're way more put together than the fallen. The fallen feel kind of uh, like. They're kind of, um, how would you say, shambly. I want to say shambly. I'm pretty certain that that's not a word, but but I, I feel like ramshackle. Yeah, yeah, ramshackle. ramshackle. That's a really good, uh, a really good way of putting it. But the cabal, the cabal feels so put together. Like these are their forces, and this is my my sweet battle armor suit. You know, I I came here to kick Guardian ass. Uh, and you know, before this, I was just chilling. Uh, you know, I was Netflix and chill. And now, uh, you know, and and now I've come to to defend this this point. You know, Remy, like I, you should know that? Netflix and chill is not Netflix and chill. <laughs> well, that's that's what they didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've always I've always thought of the cabal as your. Um, your Klingons, whereas the Fallen are just your average space pirates. Right, yeah. Romulans. Well, and not only that, the Cabal, they, just like the Klingons, they don't like anybody. They fight with the Vex, now they're fighting with the, fall, uh, with the Hive, you know, they hate us. I know, but there's so, no rhyme and reason, it's not chaos. I, I also have always noticed the similarity where the the fallen kind of remind me of hunters and the cabal kind of remind me of Titans and the hive kind of remind me of warlocks. Yeah. I was thinking that same thing. So what are the the Vex are just the ugly stepchild of, from everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, the Vex have a a very, a very complex kind of varied base. They do kind of encompass everything. And I actually think they're somehow directly related to humans in some way in the future. Like they may even be like our evolutionary descendants and we're coming back to destroy ourselves because we know we screwed up. (laughs) In this theory, maybe the Vex are our ghost. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They're technical technologically superior to us they have well they're organic but they're mostly metal so i don't know i don't know i'm not entirely certain that the vex are bad and i think they just don't care about killing i don't think that that's part of their moral spectrum like they see time as an infinite thing so like life is a a different uh, thing to them and like the end goal is more important, so they may actually be doing everything they're doing t- to to guide the future to a point of good. Uh, you know, so this brings me to my next point, and we only have about twenty minutes left, so we gotta move along. But um, did any of you see that video, uh, the Taken Son or the Taken King and Son by Panda Musk today? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Agrios, did you see it? I did not. Crimson, did you see it? Um, I almost forgot how to log into my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tweeted I it out. That. I tweeted it out today. Jez, did you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me paint this picture for those who didn't see it. This was amazing an amazing video, and if it is not the movie of the week next week, 
I will walk to Bungie myself and I will knock on that window and they will tell me to come back later. Uh, but, but seriously, it's, it's this animated, it's an animated thing called the Taken King and Son. And it's, it basically, it's, it's watching this, uh, Taken King, uh, with like a little baby Crota and he's like growing up and they're in a boat fishing, uh, you know, and, and it basically tells this whole story, uh, and I cried, I cried like a little baby, because here I am holding my infant son uh, and seeing the Taken King with his son, Crota. Uh, it was really cute. It was really awesome. Uh, and <clears throat> Flounder was talking to me about this, and she says, the only problem with this is this kind of anthropomorphizes these these creatures, you know, what are probably closer to, like, cockroaches uh, than than people and you know then we it occurred to both of us that we don't really have any idea what their social structure is you know like clearly if they have the concept of of a king then they're at least something like ants or bees uh or something like this really really smart insects but i think that there's more i think that there's more to it than that um and i think that it's I don't know. It was a really great video, uh, and it needs to be. It needs to be the movie of the week next week. It needs to be. It has to be. I'm sad that it wasn't this week, uh, but it was. It was amazing. If you have kids, uh, you know you'll you will feel this taking King's pain, and it puts a whole different spin on everything. But uh, moving on. Moving on. Twenty minutes. <clears throat> okay, so we'll move it on uh, as quickly as possible. Earlier in the week, Deej tweeted, just met with the Bungie security response team for an hour. Expect more information on Crucible Justice in the next weekly update. This week, Bungie gives us some insight into their penalty enforcement policies. We have uh, two major types of enforcements, they say. Restrictions and bans. A restriction temporarily prevents someone from playing one or more parts of the game, whereas a ban permanently prevents a player from playing the entire game. Restrictions are issued to disruptive players to give them time to reform. Depending on the severity of the infraction, first-time offenders are typically restricted for a week or two, but repeat defender, offenders can uh, receive a restriction that lasts months. Bans are only issued to the players we never want to see in the world of Destiny again. Please be advised that you are the company you keep. If a cheater is a member of your fire team, you may well get caught up in the dragnet we have weaved to ensnare them. The next part is important. Be extra careful of people advertising their services, especially for a fee. People advertising their services for a fee in, in this type of situation, such as to get you the trials of Osiris to the light, through the trials of Osiris to the lighthouse, um, are, are, are kind of in a shady situation to begin with. And... If they want to be able to reliably succeed and earn their fee, they may very well resort to to subtle cheating that maybe even their clients aren't noticing. And they could be very easily using a throwaway account. They don't care if the people on the fire team and they get busted because they'll just make another account and continue to take people through trials. It doesn't make that hard to get a character up to a working you know place if you're if you're really good at what you do to begin with, or if you're just cheating anyway. Uh, so yeah, that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, if your internet connection is consistently unstable, you may not be considered a worthy adversary. It may happen that you'll, you'll be temporarily restricted from the crucible activities until your internet connection improves. We only make these types of restrictions in the most extreme cases, so you won't be, so don't be concerned about the periodic internet lag that is common to everyone. Our servers track statistics about every player every second. We analyze the player statistics and collaborate the results with player reports and take action with statistical certainty. We manually verify the results before we issue restrictions or bans. So there's been a lot of discussion about this, and I, I think this stuff was pretty important for the community to be aware of. Um, did any of this surprise you guys? Uh, <clears throat> it scared me more than anything. It, it way scared me, like like thinking that... I could be in a match with somebody who uh, was cheating, and then I will be targeted for this, and then they won't let me play Destiny, and that will make me really sad. But <clears throat> after you no, read yeah. that last part, it made me it made me feel a lot a lot better about the thing <clears throat> overall. The, this isn't this isn't an automated response. There is a a a 
a certain set of steps that they take in order to accomplish this. And that makes me feel a lot better. Uh, and it makes me feel a lot better about going into Trials of Osiris. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think about this, Sharks? Well, you know, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I, like you, get worried at times. Um, in fact, Agrius and I were uh, playing some PvP the other day, and um, at the end of the match, Agrius goes... They're totally going to say you're cheating. They're totally going to report you. I was like, what the hell? And they go, well, come on, get real. You you did a triple down and then another triple down in 15 seconds at the end of the game. And okay, let me be, let me clarify this. We're playing skirmish. There are only three members on the other <laughs> team. So he, he immediately triples down, wiping out the entire other team. They all respawn, and within seconds, he triples down them all once again <laughs> for the last six kills in the match. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, if you go in there and you do something like that, and, and then they're going to turn around and, and they're going to report you, that's that's kind of scary. But at the same time, I know that that Bungie, obviously, it, there's a lot of ways that they're, they're looking at the stats and whatnot. I mean, we had perfect connections. Um, you know, you can look at at the kill death ratio and all that stuff, and and they'll know that it's it, that I'm not cheating. So it's it it doesn't worry me that much. But there, it always it's always in the back of my mind. It's like, ooh, you know, how many times when you're especially in PvP when you're playing and it's like, oh, you know, that guy is doing really good. And I mean, I've heard it on groups that I've been on before, like in Iron Banner, and they're like, oh, we're all going to report that guy for cheating. And I'm like, oh, why? Just because he got. 30 kills doesn't mean that he's cheating, you know? So yeah, but I don't know. I think, I think Bungie has it in hand. They're, they're going to be really careful about how they ban people. So. Yeah. I, I, I think um, that's where a lot of the complaints came from before is that people thought they would get away with being in a fire team with a cheater and that they were going to get off scot-free regardless of what happened. And I think that's where a lot of these these complaint cries about I was banded and deserve it in the community came from. And that's partially why they're specifically addressing this here. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. And uh, and yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's exciting. It's exciting to, to know that they're doing something about it. And uh, I don't know. I wish them the best of luck. I do feel mildly bad for people who unavoidably have a bad internet connection and are going to get restrictions. I know they do say it's reserved for the extreme cases and that they need to do this in order to protect their game because of the severe lag issues that we're having in Iron Banner and other large, larger matches. And um, But I still feel bad for those people, especially if there's no way for them to get better internet. Like, I feel bad that they're banned, and that's based on the fact that it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. I mean, these people having a poor internet connection wouldn't affect everything as much if there were dedicated servers, for instance. So yeah, I, I do you know, feel if it, for that. If it's just for internet connection, all Bungie has to do is take all those people and put them all together because they're already, they're already lagging anyways, and not let them play with the people that have great internet connections. I mean, it, yeah. you know, it, it drives me insane that the, it, Bungie's always touting, oh, you know, we've done this and we've done that so that uh, the matchmaking is going to be better. It's not better. I mean, every Iron Banner you get, um, at each time Iron Banner comes around, it's worse and worse and worse. So, I That know. depends, though, on how their matchmaking is coded. Because that would require them doing two things. One, filtering out everyone below a certain connection to begin with. And then that doesn't account for people with severely fluctuating connections. But filter out all the people with low connections to begin with. And then do the rest of the matchmaking based on skill. They may not have the capacity how they design their matchmaking to go in two parts like that. It may be either by connection or by skill. As in the Trials of Osiris method or the crucible, Reg Standard Crucible method. So I, I definitely, if they can't do half and half like you're suggesting, i definitely <laughs> rather still stick to, to skill-based matchmaking than have to have all my Crucible play be like Trials of Osiris. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I've i been bambooned like crazy lately. Uh, and and when I read that, I was like, oh, great. You know, this, this is it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Jez, you got on anything on this? Uh, no, it's it's fairly straightforward for what I've 
been told, and they didn't really use bands, like permanent bands, uh, at all. So, or at all yet. But so it, I can't wait till it's. It should be a little bit scary to people that are cheating. They should have some consequences. I agree. Um, Crimson. Uh, no, a lot of a lot of what I have, or was going to say, has been said. It's, you know, a lot of the uh, Aladdin mentality of, you know, it's only illegal if you get caught. <laughs> thing, right? Um, but you you know what you're doing, and if you get caught, you deserve it. That's all I'm gonna yep. say. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, moving on. On a final technical note, they say that uh, we are aware of an issue affecting some users who are unable to retrieve Red Bull Focus Light or other consumable items received via email from the Tower Postmaster. We are actively investigating this matter. Stay tuned to the Help Forum post or the Bungie Help Twitter account for updates on the matter. In addition, it's not mentioned here, uh, there was another bonus gift-giving bug that affected a large majority of the community this week, with many Guardians receiving duplicates of all the special packages they have already received thus far in Destiny, such as the uh, legendary weapon awarded back during the holiday season, um, and even hundreds of focused lights that have been redeemed. Crazy. We uh, closed then the, the, the weekly update with the movie of the week, uh, Dance Party Crasher. Someone did some interesting editing into uh, a tower dance group. Uh, a, a cabal phalanx comes to join the party. <laughs> Everybody should give that a watch. It's uh, rather well done for a little Destiny video. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> from Game Informer, we recently had a, a new uh, drop of a, an article here. Eight new Crucible maps. They give us a, a great description of them all. Uh, I'll give, 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 you, give you a quick rundown as compiled by our friends at Reddit. We have uh, Bannerfall. It's a tower-like theme, mid-sized map, good for control and rift, home to a lost faction, and the beginnings of new monarchy. Frontier map, uh, set on the outside city perimeter of Earth. Semi-symmetric map, showcase for rift. You can actually see Twilight Gap up in the mountains. Crossroads, Vex structure on Mars, features three sets of teleporters, Lifts will take you from the main body of the map to a small island. Good showcase for mayhem. Sector 618. Set inside the Cosmodrome wall. Square layout with two bridges over an abyss. Expect lots of platforming. PS4 exclusive. Ghost ship. Symmetrical map on a fallen ship in the reef. First, uh, first map we have in the reef here. Uh, one side is is uh, torn open by a hive attack and filled with hive debris. It's the smallest map in the Taken King. It's a showcase for the 3v3 game modes. It features low gravity effects where dead guardians and other objects float away. Exile. It's a prison cell on one of Oryx's ships near Saturn. Longer and narrower than most maps. Features a complicated maze of corridors. And is a showcase for control and clash. We also have Memento. Located in the European Dead Zone. Like Widow's Court. It's uh, medium sized. Good for both control and clash. And smaller team modes. Much more vertical than Widow's Court. And with significant elevation shifts. Vertigo. Located in a Vex on a Vex structure in the sky. On Mercury. Symmetrical, it features Cabal bolted-on architecture. It has a one-way teleporter to an advantageous platform. Um, some small changes noticed by uh, people uh, on Reddit uh, in the video provided here. Headshot kills now shown in the kill feed. Control point indicators are static on the left side of the screen. Uh, super kills are highlighted yellow in the kill feed. There's an arrow indicator on your Guardian's kills in the kill feed. Shax announces double kill metal. And the Feeding Frenzy perk has an active mod timer on the left-hand side, which is uh, new for this perk. Very cool. 
Very, very cool. Do do we want to talk about these, or do you want me to to do uh, the rest of the dump on the Taken King right now? Well, we got about five minutes. I I can be quick. Do you want? Should I go into it? Yeah, do it. Okay. So this is my quick quick spiel of new things we learned from the Game Informer articles. New green weapons are going to be stronger than year one raid gear. End of mission uh, to get the new subclass will give you your super at increased rate to try it out. There will be actual storytelling. No Sparrow available in the Dreadnought feels okay because it's a lot of compact action. Um, Part of an exotic weapon quest brownie is collecting 50 pieces throughout the Dreadnought for the Sleeper Simulant, uh, which is a new uh, heavy that uh, mimics... uh, a fusion rifle that's uh, handled like a primary, but it falls in the heavy slot. Um, <clears throat> you can sacrifice weapons to add upgrade experience to a weapon of the same type. I'm not entirely clear on this yet. There's a wider range of gear to allow you to have more choices with appearance. As previously discussed, light is a measure of your power, and activities have recommended light levels. It's a direct representation of your power and a good barometer to gauge the tasks and missions you can tackle with your friends. Uh, The wider range of gear gives you more opportunity to express yourself as a player. Uh, A light value is inherent to all your gear now, even starting at level 1. Like like with leveling, it offers a consistent and clear path to improvement, and it also gives Bungie a clear way to tell people what activities they should tackle. Every mission, strike, and raid now has a recommended light total, as a guidepost for when you're ready for it. Light comes from both weapons and armor now. Ghosts will add stats and light. Um, Sample ghost perks showed nearby materials like spin metal and one increased glimmer from Hive. You can now decide which weapon primary special heavy is shown in public spaces. Uh, You will be able to trade in old class-specific armor mats for the new general one. You can now buy an item from Xur that boosts exotic drop rate from the next boss that you fight. Strikes now focus more on replayability, switching up the enemy compositions and even races strike to strike. AFKers now will be teleported up with the rest of the strike team like POE is currently. There will now be... or. There's three new strike playlists, uh, Vanguard Legacy strike playlist with all the strikes from year one. Uh, Vanguard Ursa strike playlist is random heroic strikes that will award legendary marks and engrams. And the Vanguard Marmoset is only TTK strikes. Uh, There will be handcrafting, they'll be handcrafting the Nightfall strike modifiers. And there will be new bounties uh, focusing on class, fire team, the Trials of Osiris, featured playlists, and weekly bounties for really big rewards. That's all I got to uh, that we have room for right now. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> uh, shout-outs, Sharks. Uh, my shout-out is to the big boys, Luke Smith and Mark Nosewor- Noseworthy. It looks like uh, we're going to have a kick-ass game to play. Couldn't agree more, Agrios. My shout out goes to Destiny Con. It's happening in Tampa this coming Friday, uh, 7 p.m. at Miller's L House is when it starts, and then it moves to 21 and older down the street to uh, Cigar Cigar City Pub or something like that. I forget the name of it. At uh, 10 p.m., but big shout out to those guys for organizing an awesome event that I'll be attending. That can't wait to hear what you come back with. Uh, Jez. Uh, shout out to Mr. Fruit, Laced Up Lauren, and actually Cosmo. Good luck in the future for every <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> it should be good. Uh, Got some mighty fine vocals to follow up with. <laughs> uh, Crimson <laughs> Warlock. Um, my shout out this week is to my little son who is struggling doing a good job of learning that he is not the only child anymore uh, and, uh yes. it's a rough time at our house right now <laughs> oh yep yep it happens uh that sucks <laughs> and also congratulations yeah. <laughs> um my shout out is to panda musk uh you really really nailed it you really really nailed it and i really really lost it when uh, the Taken King handed Crota that present towards the end, because I knew what was in that present, and it just sent me over the edge. It was 
I don't know. It was insane. Panda Musk, you did done good. Um, and that wraps up episode 52. I would like to thank everyone listening for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics to be discussed on the show, please leave them in the comments below or send them to feedback at guardian1.net, and we will see you next week. Toggle my dinkle. Thank <laughs> you.